business here. Um, had a little mishap about a week before we left Florida in that uh, my truck was parked, parallel parked on a street and a young lady was having a little problem with a text message and uh, ran into the back of it at about 50 miles an hour and did some considerable damage to it as you can see. So we were about three weeks late getting out of there, getting, getting the damage repaired and uh, dealing with the insurance company. Luckily she had some. And so um, trucks back to normal. I was very happy with the job they did with it and uh, so we made it back okay. So I uh, spent about a week playing around off and on getting the the shop unwinterized and I'll show you some clips that I took then and uh, made a couple little modifications on the feed water system. Uh, put some foot valves in the uh, tanks and uh, installed one valve uh, on the water side of the Hancock injector and uh, we're up and running again. Um, I had a couple of rush jobs. In fact, it's been pretty rushed here ever since I got back trying to get out from under a backlog of work. Uh, and so I took some video while we, while we were doing it. Tom was over. Tom, by the way, is my apprentice. Uh, a lot of you have asked, well, do you have an apprentice or something, somebody that you can pass some knowledge on to? Tom's a, Tom and I go way back. We raced motorcycles together and did all kinds of stuff and uh, collaborated on a lot of things. And he is a, uh, 
uh, electrical engineer and computer engineer by trade, but don't hold that against him. He, uh, he's got a knack for machine working. Uh, he'll come over, uh, he's retired, and he, he'll come over and uh, knock out a little project, something that I need done around the shop. And he also is really good at firing the boiler, and some nights when we have some uh, visitors over, uh, and uh, we have a little get together. Tom fires the boiler. And uh, so, anyway, uh, I just set the camera up and let it run. We were trying to get, uh, I was trying to get a, a little bushing job out for a, uh, a customer. It was a uh, couple of front end bushings for a commercial mower, and he needed to get back in business that night. So, uh, we got that done. And uh, I followed that through with some videos a little bit, but I, I forgot to take a picture of this stuff when it was done, so you'll have to kind of visualize that. <clears throat> and Tom was working on the, the small south bend, uh, boring out a pulley that we plan to use on the generator, uh, or at least to test the generator with. And uh, I also have uh, an axle job. Uh, it's a, four nine inch axle, uh, some Mustang hot rod, <clears throat> had a four bolt pattern and the customer wanted it made into a five bolt pattern. So I tried to follow that through the process uh, so you can see how that was done. Um, I had a lot of uh, viewer mail and uh, I, maybe I'll show you that right now. Uh, this was sent in some of it last fall before I left, <clears throat> so I kind of forget a lot of the details here. But um, it was sent in by uh, uh, Matt Kieser of Stanton, California, sent me some things, and also uh, a fellow named Harvey Dix, and I don't have his. Uh, location because <laughs> the box sat for about probably a month outside my door before somebody put it in and the return address is totally obliterated. Uh, the stuff inside didn't get wet at all but it was kind of weathered. So <clears throat> and also uh, one that was uh, anonymous uh, and I don't know who sent it and if you're watching this please give me an email or a comment because I'd like to give you recognition for it. But anyway, this, this is some of the stuff. Uh, it's very interesting, very interesting items. Uh, Harvey sent me uh, a little lantern tool holder which will actually fit my little south bend, so I have a spare. And uh, a wrench probably for a tailstock and a hand wheel off of something. Um, the tool holders go, this one here is for a shaper and it's uh, for cutting internal keys and splines. You put a boring bar in it with a cutter out here that's ground to the shape of the uh, angle of the V or the uh, width of the slot you want to make and uh, that's for that. And I had a one I made because I didn't have one, and one smaller than this, but I don't have one this size, so this is really great. Uh, this is a Acme threading tool, which is really pretty cool. I'll get up a little closer, maybe you can see. Uh, the tool point is here, and Acme threads are quite a bit different than uh, uh, regular standard threads. Uh, you find them on like lathe lead screws, and this particular one matches the lead screw perfectly on my uh, on my American lathe, which is a uh, I think it's uh, inch and three eighths four. And uh, so what you do is the the tool profile, of course, comes all the way down here. So you, to sharpen it, you just grind off the top, so you got a whole lifetime worth of worth of tool there. That's sort of like a very very early primitive attempt at indexable tooling made by uh, Pratt & Whitney. Uh, this is really a cool thing here. It's a blacksmith made diamond point facing tool 
And this probably goes way back. Um, it's, it was forged out by hand. Here's the initials BC of the blacksmith that probably made it and heat treated it afterwards. Made out of medium carbon tool steel. They hardened it the best they could. This is what they would use for wrought iron or cast iron, which wasn't too hard to machine anyway. But the point, they call it a diamond point. And uh, before the turn of the century, this was the hot setup. Um, and then after about maybe 1910, 1915, it sort of disappeared. And uh, the, the point configuration consensus seemed to go toward, uh, you know, having the, uh, the front rake and the front rake and the side rake and the back rake, the way you'd normally grind it, uh, uh, like a high speed tool bit for one of these type uh, tool holders. But I'm going to grind this up and try it out on some cast iron and see how it goes. Uh, the rest are some really nice tools. Here's a parting tool. Uh, here's a big parting tool. Uh, they're split. Uh, one design is split here so that it kind of damps out the vibrations uh, from chatter. They weren't really a very rigid kind of a setup like you'd have like in a, uh, a modern tool post, but it worked pretty good. Uh, and then I have uh, some various smaller ones here that have been kind of picked over. I had a friend come in the other day and uh, uh, needed one for his 12-inch uh, south bend and found one, that uh, a left-handed one that would work real well. This particular size here is sort of in between my big lathe and small lathe, so I don't re really have anything to use it on, but thanks a lot for all the good stuff, and uh, it, we'll find a home for it, and a use for it, that is for sure, and you'll probably see some of it in upcoming videos. These are some things that Tom made one day. Uh, there's a half a dozen uh, T-bolts for the big uh, shaper. We didn't have any, so he knocked out some of them, and another thing was uh, made a set of angle plates out of a couple hunks of angle.
This is a handy dandy template for bolt patterns that you can take to the junkyard with you so you can tell what you're looking at and it's kind of handy and I bought one of these at a flea market one time and I actually could find it when I needed it so here it is it's got uh, five four and a half on five four and three quarters on five five on five and five and a half on five so I turned it over and marked the four and a half on five so it wouldn't be quite so confusing and I tried this on here a lot of different ways and the only way that it's clear of the other holes is with one hole indexed this one this one this one and this one and the problem is this is like a four and a quarter circle hole and we need a four and a half so it's gonna have to be you know off centered so I'm in order to deal with that I'm gonna bore this hole out quite big probably three-quarter inch and tap it uh, fine thread and plug it and screw it in there with Loctite plug it machine it off on both sides and then I can lay out the bolt circle scribe the bolt circle hole right through it and the other ones will fall in between that's the plan I've done these before on this old drill and it just so happens that the center hole is, is just the right size so that that drops down in there and it's tight. Except you can't go too far. Oh, you hit the bottom. <clears throat> I have a 7 8 drill in here, which is tap drill size for 1 inch 8. I put a dog on here just to make sure things stay put. So we'll start her up.
That should do pretty good. Okay, so I got it chucked up here. I screwed the piece of bolt in there with some uh, fluid weld sealant that I use for crack repair in the engine shop and that uh, actually works the opposite of Loctite. It, it hardens up with a little heat. So I, I just welded up the back side uh, and uh, ground it off a little bit flat <clears throat> and that cured the fluid weld and now I'm going to try to face this this down to this surface it indicates up within a few thousands uh, on here this is a few thousands out but these this, this surface here gets all banged up in use and everything so I'm going to take it down and just skim a little bit off of there now this stuff is really hard tough material and the reason you just can't weld these holes up is because you'd never be able to drill it with anything uh, it would get so hard uh, but by welding up around a circle around the outside of this and this is big enough so my hole will be drilled about maybe two-thirds of the way off this way and I think I'll be staying out of the heat affected zone of the weld area well we're going to give it a try and see how it goes I got a carbide tool in here I'm going to try it this is not the greatest application for carbide because it's discontinuous in it carbide is kind of brittle but We'll see how it goes. We're going to go slow and uh, see what we can do. here was uh, measured this diameter here and subtracted it from the four and a half bolt circle and then uh, divided it by two and then measured out that distance here and scribed the line there and then I had a tool bit that with a very sharp point and I just put it up against there and just moved it a little bit to make sure that I was on the mark. And then I scribed the line here. Then I went back, set this exactly on four and a half on a scale, and measured across here. And uh, the point just fell into the bottom of the groove. Uh, so I know I got a, a nice sharp feed mark here four and a half inches in diameter to lay out the bolt circle. I'm going to set this up at about <clears throat> two and five eighths, something like that, just for a trial. One, two, three, four, Five. Just a tad long. So 
you got to remember you got five five things so you don't want to go too much at a time one two three four five ah, it's a little bit short right back in the hole. So there's where we're at. Got a little one there. Scrabble on there. Mm, can't see it very well. No magic marker. in the hole. I'm going to spot these punch marks now with the uh, center drill. Let's change over the small chuck.
pressing the studs back in. The whole trick is to put them in the right hole. Now. Got a little bushing here. Actually, I think it's a big drill bushing. Fits over there nice. for watching. Uh, it was a lot of fun this time. Um, thought I'd show you a few drills that my friend Albert Smith from uh, Van Etten, New York had. He uh, stopped by one day and said, geez, I got a couple pails of drills. They're extras and you can have them. So here they are. And there's some pretty good stuff in here. And I'll clean them up and grind them and put them in inventory. Uh, also, the next video We'll be uh, talking about something pretty exciting that had to do with Albert uh, and a steam engine and uh, doing some work in the shop, so you don't want to miss it. Thanks a lot. Thanks for your subscription. Thanks for your comments. Uh, and uh, uh, we'll see you next trip.